Joining us now, member of the Senate, members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Republican Senator Cory Gardner of Colorado and Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. Good to have you both with us this morning. I want to hear about the dynamics uh, in, in these closed-door meetings. Uh, what were the sticking points? It, unanimous is pretty impressive. <laughs> Uh, Corey, why don't we well, start with you? Again, I think uh, this is testament to Senator Cardin, Senator Corker, their work behind the scenes to make sure that everything was What was, was it that out. they did that made that happen? Look, they talked to us. Uh, they talked to members. They talked to the White House. They talked to uh, leadership and actually worked hard to make sure that what we put forward was a bill that we could all support. There was an amendment. There were other amendments that were filed and withdrawn. I think it's testament to hard work. Senator Coons, are you happy with this bill? Just happy, happy, happy as a clam? <laughs> Look at him. I'm very pleased. <laughs> To see that we've got a broad bipartisan support for an opportunity for Congress to have a vote, to have a review that's in a structured, narrow, and, and importantly, um, it, it's we've got an opportunity here for congressional input on a deal, should we get one with a P5 plus one around Iran's nuclear weapons program one time in a concise and structured way, rather than what was the alternative, 20 different attempts to take down the deal by attaching it to an appropriations bill. So instead of a messy process that might well have happened in July and August and September with a Republican dominated Congress likely opposed to any deal. We've got a bipartisan solution that allows us our congressionally appropriate role, our constitutionally appropriate role as Congress, and it doesn't tank the deal because the veto threat got withdrawn. Sam Stein. What does it I guess the broader question is what does it say that Congress works so hard and unanimously to have its input, its fingerprints on this Iran deal? And then you have the war authorization against ISIS, and it looks like you guys don't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. Well, we, we've actually spent a significant amount of time on the authorization, the AUMF. Uh, we held a hearing just a couple weeks ago uh, prior to the, the most recent congressional work period. Uh, we've held hearings with the Dempsey and Kerry and Carter. Uh, that work will continue. Well, that doesn't really, I mean, yes, work is going to continue, but it doesn't seem very likely that an authorization is going to get passed. I think you could admit that at this well, point. I think there's still discussions over the language, whether it's the time frame, whether it's the authorization itself, the associated uh, groups. It's all, all debate. April. I want to go to the issue of Iran. You know, the White House keeps saying, Josh Ernest in the White House briefing keeps saying, distrust but verify. Where's the trust? How will we get the trust? Will this bill help bring some of the trust with Iran, or should we never, should we always keep this distrust but verify mentality? The important progress we've made here is trust oh. between Republican and Democrat <laughs> members of the Foreign Relations How about that? Committee. Because yeah. frankly, the distrust between some members of Congress and President Obama was at times seemingly greater than our mutual distrust of Iran. Iran. What brought us together in this particular instance, I think, was our shared objective of preventing a nuclear capable Iran mm -hmm. and our willingness, as Senator Gardner said, um, to have two leaders here in Senator Corker and Senator Cardin who listened to the members and allowed us to get to a place where we can all so, be more comfortable. Yeah. We all distrust Iran and this agreement and the structure of the agreement is rooted in a distrust of Iran. So down the road, um, we're going to learn more about Iran's nuclear weapons capability. Um, is this really something that is really considered good versus compared to what we had before. We really didn't know. Our intelligence was really faulty when it came to our Are we really going to know a lot more? And do we have the, do we have the capacity to know a lot yes, more? Yes, exactly. That's the agency that's going to be uh, tasked with making sure we know as much as we're supposed to know in this framework. Can yeah. they do it? Well, I want to add a little bit to what Chris said. This allows us the opportunity to speak with one voice. Okay. Uh, this coming together, allowing Congress to have the oversight, the input, the vote will allow the president and Congress to speak with one voice. And I think that's important when these negotiations move forward. The bill itself, the framework, does set up the opportunity for us to receive the documentation. It lays out very clearly what kind of material, the documents that we need to see uh, as we move forward on a vote for this. So it will provide us the information that we need. There are still details that are being worked out. There are negotiations that are continuing. The bottom line is we don't want any deal. We want a good deal. Right. This allows Congress and the president to speak with one voice. If we reject a bad deal, that that's the kind of yeah. unification this country needs. I guess the question is, what do you have to see in those review periods, whether it's okay. 30 days or 52 days, uh, uh, provided some conditions get hit? What do you need to see in that review period to say, yeah, you know what? 
Iran deserves to see some of its sanctions. A key relief. question is what Mika just raised: Will the IAEA have the resources, the staffing? Some say the they oversight? don't. They don't today. Mm. Here's the so good then, news. Here's the good news. I think this framework, if turned into a final deal, provides us with broader, deeper, more thorough insight, more eyes on um, on the Iran's illicit nuclear weapons program than we've ever had. The entire uh, production chain, from uranium mining to uranium milling to centrifuge production to enrichment, will be either shut down, locked down, or constantly supervised. One of many important unresolved issues in this framework yeah. agreement is will the IAEA have the resources they need? And I think you can be confident on a bipartisan basis we'll provide the yeah, appropriate But how does Congress sure push the UN to make the IAEA have everything that, that you think they should have in, in, in looking into what's happening in Iran? Well, and, and that's part of the approval process to make sure that if this process, if this framework, if this agreement is going to be agreed to, we have to know how that is going to work. We have to know how the snapback provision are going to work. We have to know the centrifuges, uh, the 6,000 number. I, I'd like to see that change. I'd like to, I'm concerned about the advanced nuclear research. I am concerned about some of the comments that have been made by the leadership of Iran in terms of access to military bases, what their possible military dimensions have really been. Those are all things that we can work out. But thanks to this framework, thanks to Congress's work to actually make sure that we have a seat at the table, we're going to get that information. This is absolutely critical. All right, Senators Cory Gardner and Chris Coons, thank you so much. Congratulations. Just a staff of six <laughs> bipartisan. Oh my gosh, it's hard to believe yeah. in this day How about and age. That? Coming Let's up, two bipartisan accomplishments. Congratulations.